Yahweh. Praise God.
and saying unto him, Cornelius. He knew his name. This is a Roman man. This is not a Jewish man. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Those good things that you've done and the giving to the people, giving the, the alms to the people and praying unto God, he said, those come up before the Lord. He said, and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. You have been doing your best. Cornelius, you have been doing what you know. Now, your alms, your good deeds that you've done, and your prayers, they come up before God. Yeah. Now I want you to go down, send you some men to Joppa. Uh, there's two men there named Simon, but I want you to get the Simon, the uh, surname is Peter. And yeah, he's staying with Simon the Tanner, and he's going to tell you what you ought to do. Sometimes we do what we can do. We do the best of our understanding. But God can show us that perfect way Show us what we ought to be doing. Not that what we're doing is not good to the Lord, but He has a better way. And uh, He said when the angel spake to Cornelius, uh, the angel spake to Cornelius was departed, He called two of His household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on Him continually. And when He had declared all these things unto them, He sent them to Joppa. On the morrow... As they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city. They hadn't got to the house yet, but they were about to get there. The word said Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So it's not quite been 24 hours since Cornelius had his face. It was about the ninth hour. And the next day, about the sixth hour, Peter goes up on the housetop. I don't think that he just a coincidence he went up there I believe the Lord drew him he felt like going up uh, to be alone to pray in about the sixth hour he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance he began to have a vision and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheep knitted the four corners and let down to the earth. <laughs> Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, three more times. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision, this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, while he's having the vision, the men are coming closer to the house. And as he's coming out of it, he's beginning to wonder, doubting himself. It means he's wondering what the vision which he'd seen should mean. Behold, the men which were sitting with Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. That <laughs> God timed it just perfect. When God moves, he moved on both ends. He moved for Cornelius and began to bid him where to send his men to. And by faith, Cornelius began to do that. And before they got there, God was already working on the other end in a way to let Peter know that it was all right. Because you see, Peter being a Jewish man, uh, they, he, he more than likely would not have been willing to have went back with these Roman soldiers and these Roman folks, these Gentile people that had come to the house. Yeah. But God ahead of time had worked it out. And just at the time that he came come out of it, there the men arrived 
out at the gate of the house. God has perfect timing. And when God begins to move in something, if we could just realize in the moment what He's doing, we would be amazed how He perfectly times everything that happens. And uh, called and asked for the sign which was surnamed Peter was lost there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit, and if you have your Bible and you want to look, that's a capital S. Yeah. Yeah. And as I've talked so many times up through the years, that capital S means the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So while Peter was uh, thinking about the vision, and a minute ago asking about him, the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Nobody came up on the housetop. Nobody uh, began to beat on the ceiling to get his attention. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, said to him, Behold, three men seek thee. He knew how many was in the crowd. He began to tell them ahead of time. He said, Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Isn't it beautiful when the Lord begins to move in something that no man began to have to tell Peter what was going on? The same Spirit that overshadowed him and gave him the vision. The Holy Ghost began to speak to him. He did not, he did not just say that there were some men that come for him. He said three men. Would you like to would you like to go ahead and guess how many men was down there waiting on him when he came down? There was three men that was waiting on him. Yeah. Peter went down to the men which were sent from him to him unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion. He's, he's a captain over an army. A just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, the second day, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after, they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. How much faith did Cornelius have in that that was told to him? Well, you say, well, if an angel come to me, I would... I believe I'd have that kind of faith too. Uh, an angel is a spiritual being. It's a spirit that came and began to tell him, talk to him. And he had enough confidence that while they were gone, he went ahead. And whatever this was that he was going to be told, it was valuable enough to him that he wanted his friends and his family to be there to hear what they ought to do. Right. Yeah. There was a time when folks had a hunger and a desire to go and inquire of the Lord what they ought to do. That they love the Word and instruction of the Lord so much, they wanted their friends and their family to hear what they ought to do from the Lord. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. He began to give him honor. But Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. How much better off would folks be if they remember that? And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Now they did not know what they was about to hear. They just had been told by Cornelius that an angel had spoken to him and sent him out to find the man that he didn't even know. And that man was going to tell him what he ought to do. And they began to gather in and fill up his house where he was at. And he said unto them, Peter began to go in and see all these Gentiles that were gathered around. He said unto them, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. 
But God hath shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Those days were over. The new way had been made by Christ. Yeah. No longer was it unlawful for men of other nations to be around Amen. the children of God, that God was fixing to do something this day and make it known that every nation, out of every nation, would He call His people. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore, for what intent have you sent for me? God did not tell Peter up at this point anything to tell them. He just said, go back with them. Well, what, I have to have the Scriptures ready. I get my verses out and I have to rehearse what... No, there's three men. The only thing Cornelius knew is he sent it for a man named Peter, surname, a uh, man named Simon, surname Peter, going to kind of tell him what to do. God hadn't even told him what to tell him. He just said, go back with those three men. Oh, how much better would the church service go if we all just move by faith? Amen. And Cornelius said four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. At the ninth hour of the day. See how God brings it right back around at the same time? And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. You'll know what an angel looks like. This one looked like a man before him in bright clothing. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, the tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all the things that are commanded thee of God. I've done my part, Peter. Now we're all here. Go ahead. Then Peter opened his mouth. And I believe the Holy Ghost. Yes. Cut me off on it. And say to this these words, Of a truth, I perceive, I understand, I see, that God is no respecter of persons. Amen. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, which was the baptism of repentance. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Now to all the people, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with Him after He rose from the dead. And He commanded us to preach unto the people and 
and testify that it is He which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To Him give all the prophets witness that through His name whosoever believeth in Him shall receive the mission of sin. While Peter yet spake these words, a man that the Holy Ghost was anointed and moving on in a group of people that didn't know but just the best that they could do began to preach unto them Jesus. He began to preach unto them Jesus. Jesus. People that had the faith to send for Peter. They had the faith to answer the call of Cornelius to come out. They had the faith to show up not knowing what would be there. They had never heard of the Holy Ghost. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that all the Gentiles also was poured out the gift. Did you hear that? Was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They were astonished. You reckon they thought it was just for the Jews only? You reckon they thought that the Holy Ghost was just for those who were Jews by blood? God began to work a work. God began to open the door. Not only was He going to call the lost sheep of the house of Israel, He called them while He was here. And He went back and now it was time that the door would be open unto all mankind. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You bear with me this evening. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. Now how did they know that the Holy Ghost had fell on them? They of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. What were they doing on the day of Pentecost? When the Holy Ghost fell on them and the flowing tongue like as a fire began to come and set upon each one of them and they every one began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance what were they speaking? They began to speak in tongues and magnify God. Yeah. Would you remember when we started tonight I said we're, we're lacking in that? We're coming up short ages we're not praising like we used to I know we're tired. Some of us are older and some of us get a little more miles on the way. What does that change about the Lord? Nothing. What does it change about the Holy Ghost? Not a thing. What's the praise that we see? These people had faith and they listened. They heard the Word. They believed what that man began to preach to them about Jesus. He did not. He did not preach to them that if you don't speak in an unknown tongue, you're going to hell. He did not, as far as I know, as I began to read and I read it to you, the only time that he mentioned the Holy Ghost, he began to mention that God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that same Holy Ghost that came down on Jesus as he came up out of the water came down on those Gentile people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, <laughs> church people. Aren't you glad tonight that He poured it out upon the Gentiles too? Yeah. Aren't you thankful this evening? Aren't you? Yeah. That the fulfilling of, of the prophecy that in the last days, had the Lord begin to say that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. You see, on the day of Pentecost, it was Jews. Amen. 
I don't know if you've ever thought about that before or not, but it was Jews that had followed Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But on this day, in the house of a Gentile man, yeah. hallelujah, in the home of somebody that others would have looked and said he's nothing and he's nobody, but a little man that did not even know about the Holy Ghost, but he loved God and he feared God. And he had good arms and he gave to the people and he was doing his best. He was even fasting that day before he went in to go and pray. And the angel said, Peter, he's going to tell you what you ought to do. Well, church, I'm going to tell you tonight what we ought to do. Yeah. We ought to look up and rejoice in the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. I can't pour him on you and you can't pour him on me. But I can hinder you If I'm not careful, and I'd like to speak words of faith to you this evening, believe on the Word itself. Believe on the Scripture itself. The first time we see this outpouring, that's why they were astonished. That's why they were amazed. It had not happened before. It had always been Jewish people up until that point. But now this time, wait a minute. This thing that God has made is not just from one nation of men, but from all the nations of the earth. God is going to call His people and make His church. Praise the sweet Lamb of God. It's for the little boys and the little girls and the grown men and the grown women. It's for the older. Come on tonight. It's for those that will look up above and beyond all of our doubt. All of our trouble is right here. Yeah. But we got to look up above that and look up to the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has a gift that is called the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Is that what the Word said He was? Yeah. A gift. Now we fret, we panic, if we're not careful, we overthink it. But when the Spirit falls upon you, you remember that Peter said, I perceive that God is no respect for a person. Yeah. Do you know what that means? <laughs> but in every nation, he that feareth him and doeth righteous is accepted with him. Yeah. Huh? Are you doing your best today, children? Yeah. Are you trying to do your best? Are you trying to do what you know to do? Are you trying to do it? Righteousness means He keeps the Word. Right. Keeps the law of God. Keeps the commandments of God to the best of their understanding of every nation of men. You'll be accepted with the Lord. No matter what the enemy tells you. No matter what the devil tries to speak to you. No matter how bad they hit hard he will fight you. And, and yes, he can fight, can he? But God is no respecter of person. Uh, mm -hmm. And God was about to prove it. Peter had no idea how God was about to prove what he had just preached to them. That God is no respecter of persons. He was not only going to prove it to those that were sitting there, but the, the brothers that came with him. They were about to have a clear understanding of the vision that Peter had seen up on the housetop. Yeah. Three times of that, that, that vessel, the word said like it was like a sheep. It was a vessel that come down and he began to see all the all and then when the Lord began to tell him to go out to to preach the gospel to every creature. That's what he was talking about. Those that, that at one time by law were unclean and, and unfit and common, that they were not worthy of the things of God. God through his son had made a way now that that was done away with. And everyone that would fear Him, everyone that would love Him, everyone that would keep His Word, is accepted with Him. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost fell on them. Yeah. How good is it? Y'all remember during the homecoming? That night, when like that, that Holy Ghost land fell over here. Sisters, that was the Holy Ghost that got on me. 
That was him. There's not another spirit that will get on you to get you into the Holy Ghost. It's all the Holy Ghost. Right. Yeah. And that cry that come out from that corner over there that night, and I was sitting back right over there, and that cry just rolled across this church. Yeah. And when it came, it's just like it hit me all over. Yeah. You know why? Because I know His Spirit. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ages, your God is no respecter of persons. If you will fear Him and you will keep His command, you will do righteous, He will accept you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. I don't know if I can get Tammy to testify tonight. Yeah. You want to tell it? I'll let you tell it. If not, I'm going to tell it. Praise the Lord. Lord did something for us. Tell your family what the Lord did for you.
Thank you.